You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. rollermartinunfiltered.com. Folks, big, shit, big developments in the case of Ahmaud Arbery, the black man shot and killed February 23rd by two white men as he was jogging down the street. First, the Georgia Attorney General has called on the Department of Justice to come in and investigate the district attorneys who were involved in this case. The initial DA, Janice Johnson, recused herself. Cops, though, in Glenn County Police Department say they wanted to arrest the two men involved, but she said no. The second prosecutor, George Barnhill, he, he uh, absolved these two men, George McMichael, Travis McMichael, of the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, uh, and then recused himself. And the third prosecutor took forever trying to make a decision before the Georgia Bureau investigation. They were called in and made an arrest within the first 36 hours. That's one issue. The second issue, that is, a special prosecutor has now been appointed in this case, a black woman from Cobb County, who is a Republican appointee, of Governor Brian Kemp. Also, over the weekend, this video was released showing Ahmaud Arbery inside of the home that was under construction. Oh, people on the right, conservatives, white folks, and white folks who think like, black people who think like my Candace Owens, raised and said, oh, here you go, Ahmaud Arbery. It wasn't, he wasn't jogging. He, they were saying that this is just like, hands up, don't shoot. Well, the owner of that home said nothing was stolen. And all of a sudden, a bunch of people on social media, black, white, Latino, Asian, said, I've gone to look at houses like this before. What's the big deal? Okay, guys, we have the video rolling. So uh, go ahead. All these things. Hurry case. I want to bring in my legal panel right now, A. Scott Bolden. Former National Bar Association, uh, Political Action Committee, go deep to well day, Robert Patillo, uh, civil rights attorney. All right, uh, Robert, I'm going to go to you. So a lot of things happened, Robert, last 48 hours there in Georgia. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about uh, what you were just saying, that you have a lot of these uh, conservative online bloggers with absolutely no legal uh, experience or knowledge uh, who are putting out disinformation about the liability and the ability to assert self-defense uh, and or a citizen's arrest in Georgia. Understand one thing. Uh, we have a lot of case law in this state. You have Patel v. State. You have Brunson v. State. Uh, you have uh, Carter v. State, which lay out when an individual can assert uh, a claim of uh, of citizens' arrest, and none of it involves pulling a gun on somebody, chasing them with a pickup truck, surrounding them with three people, and then shooting them. Uh, with regards to self-defense, as um, has been thrown out there as an option for a uh, for justification as to why this individual uh, was shot. You cannot assert a claim of self-defense when you provoke the action. When you approach somebody with a gun drawn, with a shotgun, that person then has the right to defend themselves against you. Uh, there is no claim of self-defense. You have committed a felony yourself by pointing a shotgun at them of aggravated assault, and you lose all claims of self-defense. Anybody who's a Second Amendment advocate or a gun owner knows that you cannot brandish a weapon at somebody in a threatening manner. That is a felony charge in, the, in this state. So it's ridiculous the way they tr they're trying to muddy the waters and sully what is going on. Uh, at most, uh, Mr. Arbery was gu guilty of uh, trespassing. Uh, and me and my wife, when we were building our house, we went through the neighborhood and we went through houses just like that to see what they were building inside of our houses. Uh, so I don't think that anyone could justify that being the basis for killing an individual. And if the facts were changed, if this wasn't a 25-year-old black man, if it was a 80-year-old white woman or a 20-year-old white cheerleader or something, and two rednecks had chased her down and shot her, I don't think we'd be having this argument. Yodit uh, Tuelde, again, all of a sudden, the Georgia AG wants DOJ to investigate these DAs for wrongdoing. You now, of course, have this video where people say, oh, here you go. Why, why was why seeing khaki shorts and Timberlands jogging? Um, hell, you got people who jog in uh, combat boots. This is the part where they're going to try and make out this career criminal, um, that he was doing something wrong. And what we're doing is feeding into that, and we shouldn't. 
I don't care what he was doing on that property. At the end of the day, the McMichaels didn't see him commit a crime. That is the point. They said that they, well, Barnhill, that is, a second DA who recused himself, said that they were well within their rights to, to, to detain him or at least try to detain Ahmad under the citizen's arrest law. And that's just incorrect. They can't believe or try and detain Ahmad based on a belief, based on what they think they know. They didn't actually see him commit a crime, therefore the citizen's arrest law was not appropriate at the time. So while we sit here and argue about what he was doing, whether it's, it's a normal thing to go through a property under construction or not, we have to keep focus on what the law is and what we know as facts. Right now, that just wasn't appropriate, and that's it, it would have been an illegal arrest, and therefore they can't now cry self-defense because they were approaching him when they shouldn't have. Scott Bolden, I'm going to bring you in here again. When you when you look at these things that are coming out, the homeowner says nothing was stolen, and then all these people. I mean, I've had white conservatives, black folks, others who say I've often gone into homes under construction, taking a look around, and people are saying. This happens all the time. You know, you know, your deed is completely correct. I mean, it's all irrelevant. It's ridiculous and irrelevant. The video actually helps us, helps the prosecution, because whatever the defense is going to be about their right to stop and their right for reasonableness just goes completely out the window. So what? And by the way, one thing we have not talked about is Tennessee v. Garner. I know my colleagues know that case because uh, I've written about it, that the, even the police cannot shoot a nonviolent fleeing felon mm -hmm. it, it, who is running from them. Even if he was committing a felony, here he's not committing any crime, he's looking around. If he was trespassing, the only person that could stop him and file charges against him for trespassing isn't the defendant, isn't the arrestees, but the owner of the property. And they weren't around and nothing was stolen. And so we have to keep perspective, as my uh, colleagues have said here. Uh, this will be part of the defense, but that dog won't hunt. And it will be highly insufficient or completely insufficient of a defense. You got a good judge, a former judge, rather. Uh, I think um, Robert talked about this judge in Cobb County, or rather this prosecutor in Cobb County. Uh, she's a conservative, but that's okay. That means if she's a judge and she's a, and she's a politically conservative, She's going to play it by the book. And if you play it by the book here, the only thing that matters is, do you have the elements uh, for uh, felony murder and uh, aggravated assault here? You have that. This case is going to go to a jury or it's going to be a plea because nothing else really matters but the facts. And you've got two videos that tell the whole story. This is also, of course, uh, when you uh, look at the calling in of the DOJ to investigate. I, I, I think that is obviously it's important. I'm not confident at all, though, Robert, in this Department of Justice uh, when it comes to this issue. But, but something does stink when you have police officers saying they wanted to arrest these two men on the spot. Janice Johnson said no. The second DA weighs in, pretty much acts as the defense attorney uh, for these two men but then recuses himself. And the third attorney, I don't know what the hell he was doing uh, for several weeks. It took the Georgia Bureau investigation literally 36 hours to come in and then do, do an arrest. This guy only announced after the video leaked, oh, I'm going to take it to a grand jury. the DOJ investigation, not just look into the prosecutors, but they should look into the hate crimes elements uh, with regards to this, particularly 18 U.S.C. Uh, 241, 242, and 249, because what we've seen throughout the South historically yeah. is the inability of local prosecutors to uh, convict white defendants for killing black people in the South. You go all the way back to Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner. You can go to Kenneth Walker. You can uh, go through police shootings throughout the South. So you have to have that federal backstop there, both to invest... Uh, <clears throat> both to investigate the uh, the deeds of these previous prosecutors, but also to ensure that uh, if there is a uh, an acquittal or if there is no indictment in this case, because uh, remember you still have to uh, have the grand jury with the Atlantic Judicial Circuit. We want to make sure you have as many bites of the apple uh, from unpartial and in, uh, unbiased bodies to um, to get a conviction. With regards to um, the Cobb County prosecutor who was appointed to be the special prosecutor in the case, we do need to keep an eye on this because one, she is politically conservative. Two, um, she's only been on the job about a year. 
Uh, she's up for re-election uh, this year, uh, and so there's no guarantee that she will even be the prosecutor on the case if she does not win re-election. Uh, there are more experienced black prosecutors in the state, people like Sherry Boston in DeKalb County, um, uh, Darius Patillo down in Henry County, uh, who I think most, much of the legal community would, uh, uh, would like to see prosecuting this case. Also, remember the Ross Harris case, the uh, man whose uh, son uh, was left in the back of a hot car. That case was removed from Cobb County and tried down in Brunswick. Uh, Brunswick. There is a question as to whether or not there are conflicts between the chief um, murder investigator in that Cobb County DA's office, uh, having worked in Brunswick and lived in Brunswick for three months during that trial. Yo, Date, um, you know, we look at a whole deal here. I mean, it just boggles the mind that you could go through three DAs and none of them act until the video gets leaked and finally as an arrest in the Georgia Bureau investigation. I mean, they, yeah. they need to answer to themselves here. They no, are they there actually, to protect the public. It's it's more than just removing these DAs from office. They actually need to be disbarred. This this Barnhill guy, uh, it, it's, it's more shady than we actually know. And the AG in Georgia, Chris Carr, uh, stated that there were things he didn't know. When he appointed Barnhill because the first DA, Jackie Johnson, recused herself, he had already been involved the day after the shooting. The day, so he was involved before he was even appointed as a prosecutor. And not only that, the National Association of District Attorneys condemned him because he realized that he had a conflict of interest on April 2nd. On April 7th, he wrote a memo literally laying out why this killing was justified after he knew that he had a conflict of interest. How inappropriate, how beyond disgusting is that? This is someone who not only needs to be investigated, but his bar card needs to be in jeopardy. Yo, Dean, but we call that uh, memo one. You know what we call that memo, right? We call yeah. that memo leaving oh, a defense for the defendants, even though he was <laughs> going to be, he knew he was going to be out of the case. That He didn't have to write that memo at all. He voluntarily yeah. wrote that memo. And, and Scott, I mean, to that point, that I've never, ever seen a prosecutor write a memo that lays out completely every plausible defense, <laughs> creates a taints the jury pool in a way that will make it impossible to get a conviction at jurisdiction, and then right. have another conflict they, they do not disclose at the beginning of the case. is completely outside the, uh, the realm of any possibility. He, 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 he created his paper difficult. trail He's with, making with, it with a good old boys, as we say. He created oh, the oh, paper oh, trail. Oh, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Your deep, this Scott. Your deep, go ahead. Okay. Oh, what I was just going to say is not, yeah, I mean, he's not only making it difficult for a the next prosecutor to try this case, but he's potentially tainting uh, a jury pool. He, exactly. He's hearing all of the, the defenses for the defense, and to put that in a memo format that was made public for anybody to read, it's disgusting. It, he needs to be it, removed it was, and his bar license needs to be taken, period. Right. It, it, it was done purposefully. It, it, it really was. I mean, there's no accident when you do that because prosecutors don't have to put everything in writing. But but the uneven justice system in Georgia has to be looked at. I think Robert's right about this. This is a broader issue. I, when I was when I was researching the updates on this case, there's a case in the AJC, the Journal of Constitution, about Shannon Brown. A very a former NBA player, won a couple rings, lives in Fayetteville, Georgia. Now, his house is up for sale, and two people came to see the house. Apparently, there was some dispute. He got his rifle and fired a shot, didn't hit anybody. Four to six hours later, the couple who came to the house reported him to the police. He was arrested hours later and recently released to go back to his home. He didn't kill anybody. He was defending his property. And he was arrested within hours of them reporting it, and they delayed the report. It's just completely uneven justice and enforcement in, in Georgia. And uh, we've got to do something about it on a broad basis. Prosecutors have a lot of discretion, but it's got to be more even across the state of Georgia, I think. Well, they can start by getting rid of that um, citizen's arrest law. I mean, it's... it's oh, there's no question about it. It's worse yeah, than yeah. staying your ground. 
Well, we, we remember, Rainbow Push sued the actual state of Georgia House, right? in 2013 to try to repeal some of these laws. Uh, it's very difficult when you have a majority uh, of one party, a constitutional majority in the House, the Senate, and all judicial agencies and then the governor's mansion. But I think this might be the groundswell support that people need to get out there in November and replace many of these officials because it is impossible to make the changes that are needed to, uh, to have justice in the system as long as you have antiquated laws to go back to the Jim Crow past of the state. Yeah, but you gotta oh, elect blue Dems. You have to. You gotta. The, the, the broader spectrum here is that this is a very red state. We know the corruption politically and civil civil rights, um, criminal justice system. But if black people vote in Georgia in numbers, we we can change that red state to a blue state locally at the state level where these matter, these crimes matter, and those who prosecute them matter. And then the governor's race. That ought to be a priority. Because politically, these are Republican decision makers uh, making these decisions, not Democrats. But, but it's All not right, just, Dan. Like I said, it's not enough to just remove these people from, from office. These lawyers, these prosecutors need to stop practicing law. Because they'll go somewhere oh, yeah. else and practice and still do yeah, the same You're thing. absolutely right. It, you're right. I, I couldn't disagree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. Just, and, I, and I've been at this a long time, perhaps longer than my colleagues on this panel. But I've never seen anything like it. And there's a lot that goes on wrong in the courtroom all around this country. But uh, this is just, this is like something from a bad movie. That keeps happening. All right. Over and over again. <laughs> all right folks. Sorry, Roland. We'll just talk a lot. Uh, yeah, no kidding, really. I and he let us talk so this time. Uh, God bless you, Roland. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> because you, had, you, finally, you, cause you finally had something to say. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yo, D. Robert Scott, see, if you're going to open your mouth, I'm going to hit you right back. All right, well, deep, Robert Scott, I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honore, the nation's first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders, John Hope Bryant, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California, Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin, Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick, Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams, Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens, Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, how University Street. Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kip Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, the president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudill, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senior and Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Braidboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand, Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, Merida Bennett College. Coroner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta. Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist Suzette Clark. Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr. Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District. Dr. Leon Madugo, president-elect of the National Medical Association. Jana Bailey, mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi. Uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You get the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. 
Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.